any sexual assault, there's a huge disparity amongst what happens when a woman of color is violated, um, wh- whether or not she protects herself, what happens, and an equal to protect, an equal to protection on behalf of, of, of folks who are supposed to protect them. Liz, we're also joined here in the Firehouse Studio in New York by activist, author, journalist Herb Boyd, who edits the online publication Black World Today. Um, w- welcome to Democracy Now, Thanks Herb. Your yeah. assessment of what is happening now, these situations, and the coverage that they're getting. I think one one of the things that we recognize in Amy is that the uh, we've had all these nooses, the prevalence of nooses, proliferation of nooses out here. We've gone from symbolism to action. I mean, I mean, a noose is obviously uh, a symbol of terrorism. I mean, if you put it in historical context, we go back to uh, like 1882 to 1951. Something like 5,000 people were lynched in this country. One of the difficulties with all of this, with the prevalence of nooses, is the separating the kind of uh, racial predator, you know, from the kind of mischievous prankster. You know, to what extent is the copycat thing out there? But more than anything, we're talking about the systemic malevolence here. You know, all across. I mean, each day we see a new incident of a news finding. You know, what is it all about? You know, it's like people asserting their authority. You know, it's just a way of like we still in control of black bodies in this country. Malik Shabazz, as we wrap up, um, I asked you about the U.S. Attorney Charles Miller, why they haven't filed hate crimes charges against the six. What about the Logan County prosecutor, Brian Abraham, in West Virginia? Um, uh, According to uh, the Amsterdam News, he has not ruled out state hate crimes charges in addition to the kidnapping and first-degree sexual assault charges he's already brought against the six white suspects. And that's why we continue our legal advocacy and we'll pursue it vigorously. Uh, we know that this is, at minimum, a state hate crime, and this must be established. West Virginia is a 98% white state, they're 2% blacks. The filing of hate crime charges in this case will ensure the broader protection of blacks in the state. Uh, and, and so we will continue to fight vigorously, and I expect to see progress in that area. Uh, and in general, I think we have to, and we will, from my perspective and those that are with us, and fight with others, because I believe that the hanging of nooses is a sign that there will be real bodies under those nooses very soon. I believe that uh, this is just the first level of increased racial violence. Uh, and Malik Shabazz, there's women. going to be a protest on November 16th in Washington, D.C. against racial violence? There is. I think that's Reverend Sharpton's protest, and I think in order for him to be successful in general, he has to uh, make a real effort to uh, fight with those that are really fighting on the ground in that struggle. Uh, If he's really going to make progress, and I hope he does, he has to seriously uh, be sincere about working hand-to-hand with those that are fighting these issues of racist violence and gender violence. I want to thank you all for being with us. Malik Shabazz, uh, attorney for Megan Williams, uh, uh, also the co-founder of Black Lawyers for Justice, Luz Marquez, associate director of the National Organization of Sisters of Color Ending Sexual Assault, and journalist Herb Boyd. Thanks so much for joining us. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Shreve Odokadus, John Hamilton, Angela Comet, Jeffrey Hagerman, Steve Martinez, Nicole Salazar, Ricardo Lobo, Mike DeFilippo, Miguel Naguera, engineers. I'll be in Baltimore on Saturday morning at 9 speaking. Check our website. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.